welcome to the show. Uh, this week we I've got a goalkeeper with us. He's a big fella, but then you have to be to be a goalkeeper. Once upon a time, England had goalkeepers who were five foot eight and five foot nine, but not anymore. It's land of the giants. But this fella was a big guy. He played uh, international football, and most of his career was played at Walsall. Uh, though he did have the the odd sojourn here and there. Uh, Mick Kearns, welcome to the program. Um, Thank you, Bob. You are, of course, uh, from Banbury originally, aren't you? I was brought up in Banbury, yeah, d down in Oxfordshire. Four brothers. My parents moved over from Ireland in the uh, in the late forties, and uh, I was brought up there. And you were not the only one to play professional football in the family, were you? Now, my brother Oliver also played. Uh, I had a, a brother called Eamon who played part time, so uh, money mm -hmm. from the game uh, outside the football league. But Ollie had a decent career with Hereford, uh, Reading, Oxford, and uh, had a season at Walsall also. He scored a lot of goals, didn't he? I, I, I remember him. When you said Oliver, I was quite thrown. I'd never heard him call that before. Cause it was always Ollie Kearns, wasn't it? Yeah, well, my mother always called him Oliver, mm. and we always called him Oliver. But, yeah. you know, your names get shortened. A bit like myself, mm. Mick in football, but Michael from my mother. Mm. Did, you, did you and Ollie play together as youngsters then? Yeah, we would have done. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Listen, football wasn't as organised in those days. You didn't have, you know, youth teams and, and young teams. You put the goal, uh, you know, jumpers down for goalposts in those days and played in the park, and we we, we played regularly, but we, we didn't play the, in the same junior team. Wait, were you a goalkeeper, or did they make you a goalkeeper? Because you, were you a big lad even then? Uh, yes. Uh, I remember I was six foot one at 14. Uh, I can't remember what height I was. Mm. below that, uh, younger than that, but um, uh, no, I al always had um, aspirations of being a goalkeeper. At those days, you play outfield as well, but uh, I think as, as you get older, um, you, you, you find a position that you become more natural to. So you preferred being a goalkeeper to studying, did you? Uh, yes, I'd, I'd have to say that because I certainly underachieved uh, academically and as a scholar uh, because all I wanted to do was be a professional footballer uh, as, mm. lo as a lot of kids do gr growing up and uh, I can remember a school teacher advising me one day um, you know to, to forget about uh, any aspirations of being a professional footballer because you will not make it as a professional footballer and mm. try and concentrate on a, another career but uh, thankfully I didn't take his <laughs> advice. Was Ollie of the same mindset, was he? Yeah, I think he was. Uh, he came in a little bit later. He didn't do an apprenticeship. Um, he was uh, an apprenticed uh, electrician. Uh, but then he started scoring a few goals for, I think it was Banbury United, and Reading spotted him and, uh, and signed mm -hmm. him from there. You were lucky you've never had a proper job, have you? Well, loads of people <laughs> say that to me. Yes, I've never had a proper job. And, uh, that's two of us. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. So how did you get then from jumpers for goalposts to, to actually playing the game professionally? Um, I was very fortunate in the sense that the year that I left school was the first year Oxford United uh, were having a youth team. So I can remember going uh, with another pal from Banbury and we went and had a trial at Oxford. And uh, it was on a Sunday after afternoon. Uh, m well, must have been pressed because I got, I got asked to come back the following Sunday um, and then um, I was signed on as an amateur and at that time Oxford had about six apprentices and then I was playing along, uh, you know, as an amateur, having just left school and then I worked up the courage to go and see Arthur Turner who was the manager at that time uh, and asked him would he consider me signing as an apprentice. So he said, uh, come and see me uh, next week. Um, and uh, I went in and he mm -hmm. must have thought that I, w I was good enough to sign an apprentice. He asked me to go home and discuss it with my father. And uh, that wasn't much of a discussion. I just told my father what I was going to do. And, really? Uh, yeah. yeah. And uh, he, was full of s he was very supportive. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I signed on as an apprentice mm -hmm. then the, the following week. You said you plucked up the courage to go and ask him. Was he that sort of guy? I'd, I've never met yeah, him. Yeah, Arthur Turner. The only time you ever knew that you had a good, ta good, a good game uh, playing under Arthur Turner was if he didn't say anything to you. He would go, you'd all be just sitting around in the dressing rooms and he'd go to every single one in the dressing room and if he stopped where you were sitting, you knew you were in for a rollicking of some sort. But if he walked straight past, you'd have a, mm. a sigh of relief thinking, well... I must have played well in his eyes. 
do you feel a sort of great excitement when, when you got your first opportunity then? Uh, in the first team, mm. uh, very much so. I, I can remember that, that it, was, it wasn't very straightforward, uh, my, my debut for Oxford. It was on a good Friday, and Jim Barron, who was, uh, was the goalkeeper at Oxford at the time, had had a problem with an, something like an ingrown toenail or something, but Jim had played on with it. Uh, well, obviously, it got worse, and then the club doctor came, and uh, I think I was... Uh, I was in the uh, in a cafeteria type place mm. within the ground, halfway through a meat and potato pie, and there was an announcement: "Would Mick Kearns please go to the dressing room?" <laughs> this was uh, about an hour before kickoff. Yeah. So, oh, what have I done wrong? You finished the pie? No. <laughs> <laughs> I th I th the first thing I'm thinking of is, what have I done wrong? Yeah. Um, so I go up to the dressing room. Uh, Jerry Summers is the manager. And he said, um, over there, yeah, you're playing. Playing? You know, I, I just couldn't believe mm. this had, had happened. Because Jim had been playing in, in a little bit of pain, I know that. But the doctor must have took one look at his toe mm. on this particular occasion and thought, no, you can't play. Mm. So I was thrust into that. We play, I can remember playing Leicester City uh, in my debut. And Peter Shilton was in goal for, for Leicester. And uh, we lost 1-0 at home. Mm. Um, in those days, because it was over Easter, uh, that was on Good Friday, uh, the next, this, you don't have time then, and mm -hmm. I knew I would be playing over the Christmas period, and we played away at Cardiff City, and it was a time when John Toshak and Brian Clark was up front, and Jimmy Schooler, I think, was, was the manager, mm -hmm. and we went there, and, and they were at the top of the league, which was what the, it was the second division then, but it was now the championship, mm -hmm. and I, uh, we drew nil-nil, and, uh, you know, I, I played quite well. And uh, then they kept me in the team for the following Tuesday. And that was away at Villa Park. Oh. Nice little start for yes, you. Yes, it was a <laughs> terrific start and um, a pleasing start because we drew nil-nil uh, there. And it was a time when um, George Curtis was playing, Chico Hamilton, Andy Lockhead was up front mm -hmm. for them. So we're going back to the... Nine, around 1970, 71, yeah. and uh, it was quite ironic that that nil-nil was th it was in a season where Villa got relegated to what is now the first division. In those days, was the third division, and I had been brought up in Banbury with lots of Villa supporters, yeah. and you can't believe it. When they got relegated, they blamed me for it because they got relegated by one point or something, so I got the blame for them. That seems fair yeah. enough. And so you played those three and then you were um, Yes, the and listen, I was so disappointed, mm. you know, because I thought I played well, but mm. no, of course, Jerry Summers was absolutely right, you know, mm. to bring back the experienced goalkeeper. Mm. Uh, but obviously I'd shown enough because I think it was at the end of that season, um, Jim was sold to Nottingham Forest and I, and I took over from him. I'm just thinking when you played Aston Villa and Andy Lockhead was up there, he um, he was a, what shall I say, a combative player, wasn't he? Yes, and I, I mean, knew all about him it. coming towards you, and and but I mean, you're a big lad. What, how how tall were you then? Well, I, you I wasn't so to? wide in those no, days, fair Bob, enough, but okay. I was um, equally as tall. Um, I can remember getting battered by him and George Curtis running all over my back as I lay on the mm. floor with the ball. But that was what they used to do in those days, mm. and nobody would have battered an eyelid. Uh, but um, yes, I got battered and bruised, but. Listen, that was what I came into football for. Not to get batters and bruises, <laughs> but to experience <laughs> to play, that part yeah, of it, yeah. yeah. Did you think about retaliating first? No. No. I wouldn't have, Never done, been with in my I wouldn't have done with George. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would have uh, no. handled yeah. myself very well. But there you are. I mean, you know, even if it was just the three games at that, I mean, it was a, you know, a great start and there were good matches, weren't they, to have played? Fantastic matches. Leicester, right. Cardiff and Aston Villa, I mean. Yeah, uh, brilliant matches to have come into. You couldn't have asked for better ones uh, than that because they were all top teams of mm. that, of, uh, that, that uh, second division as it was in those days. Mm. I'm trying to think back then, as you say, it was a, it was a very, very different game, wasn't it, to the one, one we, we see now? Yeah, very, very different. I mean, today, uh, you know, most players are, are far more dedicated. They're, they're, built, but they're more like athletes mm. uh, today. There's a lot more pace to the game. Players are a lot quicker. Uh, whether, you know, whether there's more skill or not, uh, I'm not sure, because there were a lot of skillful players in those mm. days. Yeah. Um, 
So, you know, that, that's a debate as to whether they're, they're more skillful. But uh, is it more entertaining? You know, that's in the eye of the yeah. beholder, of course. The game has changed markedly, as, you, as we know. But the basics of goalkeeping haven't, have they? No, they haven't. Um, I mean, you described me as six foot four and all goalkeepers now are, 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 are tall. Uh, but it's all about keeping the ball out of the net. Um, I mean, we had a goalkeeper at Warsaw, Jimmy Walker, who... who was five foot ten ish uh, but he was a terrific goalkeeper yeah. his timing was excellent it yeah. has to be if you're a small goalkeeper particularly yeah. if you're coming for crosses and it's all about keeping the ball a out of the net really yeah I, I mean I was just saying in, in the era that you grew up in England goalkeepers they were all five foot eight five foot nine yeah they? I mean Gordon Banks yeah who, who's the best I ever saw mm. uh, what wasn't uh, Blessed with, you know, uh, yeah. a large degree, uh, no, yeah. height wise. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pat Jennings was, yeah. uh, Ray Clements was, Peter Shilton, mm. no, he, he would have been around about the same yes. size as, but as Gordon. Mean, but uh, Gordon Banks was so agile, wasn't he? He was fantastic. He, uh, he made goalkeeping look very easy. You know, the ball, a shot would come in, it'd be a terrific shot from the right, you know, from the right hand side, say, and he'd just catch it nonchalantly and throw it out to the mm. left back. Whereas you'd had other goalkeepers doing somersaults, tipping it over the bar and yeah. making it look flashy. But he would make the game uh, look yeah. easy. You said you, you, you lived your young life in Banbury and you just mentioned that there were a lot of Aston Villa fans there. Did, were you a Villa supporter? No. Uh, funnily enough, uh, growing up I was a Wolves fan. And um, I think I was a Wolves fan right from probably one of the f early matches I ever saw was the 1960 Cup final. Mm. And I remember seeing it, I think it was the first year we even had a television in the house. Mm. And watched it, Norman Dealey scoring a couple of goals and, uh, uh, you know, I'd been hooked on football before that mm. because of playing at school, but, you know, not every house had a television in those mm. days. And uh, watched the 1960 Cup final and uh, I was hooked then on Wolves, really. And what about hero goalkeepers? Who, who, who were your favourites? Uh, Gordon Banks, I'd have to say, mm. uh, was, you know, because as I was, you know, watching, uh, being a school lad, uh, he, he was always my, my hero. Um, and he's, he's still the best, uh, mm. in my opinion. Uh, however, then it graduated to people like Pat Jennings, Peter Shield, mm. Ray Clements. Mm. Um, and if you look at all three of those goalkeepers they had mm -hmm. three you know th if their uh, main attributes uh, would have been three different ones mm -hmm. fr from those three goalkeepers uh, and really you couldn't could split all three of yeah. those they, they everybody had have an opinion mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. whoever's opinion would probably I is right mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there's a fair argument to put for all three of them it's interesting that you you mentioned a few minutes ago about the athleticism of players to get today but goalkeeping hasn't changed I remember Gordon Banks telling me that when he played as an amateur that his, his weekly job was he worked for a coal merchant and he oh. was taking bags of coal off the back of lorries and he said that helped him build his upper strength and in his arms yeah I mean Players today, young players, they would just look at him. Well, they wouldn't know what a, a no, Colin Murray was, would they, no, the starters? They no. But I mean, they would be just be amazed that that was, mm. that was how it was. Yeah. Um, did he have to have something in him that, that made him particularly good? I mean, you've obviously got to have good eyesight and, and be pretty Well, natural, natural ability, mm. really. I mean, uh, if you looked at him, he, he was a very natural goalkeeper. He was very good uh, shots that were low down. He was good, at, you know, high up. He was terrific like that. I have to say that, in my opinion, I wasn't blessed with great ability as a goalkeeper. Uh, where I think my strengths were that I had to work very, very hard at becoming uh, you know, a reasonably successful goalkeeper. But I think my strength was my communication with the back four. I could organise my back four uh, well. Um, uh, and I think that was probably my, my, my strength. Uh, but, you know, Gordon Banks. It's interesting you say about him, you know, uh, carrying bags of coal. Yeah. That was probably his weights. Yeah. You know, yeah. but, but players he might have called yeah. used to lift huge big weights. Yeah. Nowadays, they lift weights, but they're more, much smaller weights mm. and make the muscles more resilient. But in our days, cool. you know, you used to have huge big, sh really like shot putters. <laughs> Uh, but as I say, in his case, it was bags of coal, and it, it certainly did the trick for him. So, uh, and I suppose the the, the saving the World Cup 
Yeah. And Pele, that's the moment, isn't it? We all remember. Well, it is. And, uh, you know, listen, Gordon made mm -hmm. a lot of good saves throughout his career, but it's obvious a, a huge game like that in the World Cup, that'll always be highlighted. But the, 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 he made some fantastic saves. And it wasn't all, like I say, it wasn't all about making saves. Uh, he quite mm -hmm. often made the game look very, very easy. Well, we will uh, we'll move on and talk about your career at Walsall in, in the next part of the programme. Uh, but for the moment, uh, Mick Kearns, thank you very much. Interesting to hear how your career started and uh, how you got, uh, got, because of a man with a bad toe, you got your yes. first opportunity uh, to play in league football. That's all to come for the moment. Uh, here's the break. did it uh, take you to get to the notice of international selectors then? Well, obviously I was, must have been performing well uh, for Oxford and uh, I think word got out that my parent, both my parents were from the west coast of Ireland, County Mayo, and uh, they sent somebody over. In those days, um, it would have been committees that would have picked right. the squad. It was yeah. peculiar. Um, and they sent somebody across. Obviously, they thought I was okay. We, we would like mm -hmm. to be putting me into the squad, and uh, I got into a squad. Um, and it was against Poland. Uh, the match was against Poland, and uh, they put me on in the second half. Who was the manager then? Um, Mike Megan. Wow! Now you've come up with a name I yes. don't know. So you've done. Uh, played for Everton. Oh yes, yes, I do. Uh, for years, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mick Meegan, uh -huh. and uh, he uh, put me on at half time. Uh -huh. And uh, I can the one thing I remember about that game, the adrenaline was flowing so much. Um, I, I picked up the ball and uh, bounced it, and then kicked it down the field. One bounce, and it went over the bar. Incredible! I've never, yeah. you know, no. ne never had a kick anywhere like it since, and it was ju uh, just yeah. pure adrenaline. Yeah. And of course, as the years went by, the years mm. Engl Ireland supporters remembered it. So every time I got the ball, they wanted me to kick the ball. Ah. Well, of course, then uh, wherever I had most of my caps was with Johnny Giles. Mm. Well, you didn't kick the ball no. under John no. because he wanted you to mm. throw it out every yes. single time. Of course, the crowd were cheering, and I didn't, and they'd be boo, you know. But uh, so, so that I first mean. game, you came on uh, for Alan Kelly. You were telling me, yes. That's right. Was that a, to give you a run out? Yeah. Or was it? Yes. I think I yeah. think that's what it was. Um, yeah. Did you win? Do you remember? Um, I didn't let a goal in. Right. I remember that. But uh, had Alan but let a goal in <laughs> earlier in the game? I got a <laughs> feeling it was nil nil, but yes. I, I can't be sure mm. about that. Yeah. Um, passage of time has caught mm. up on me. But I mean, terrific experience, and as you say, I mean, you know, then you you were playing for Oxford, so you were not playing at the highest level. No. Um, and then as I as I progressed, um, and um, I think I got injured and and then couldn't play, and then eventually got back in when I was playing for Warsaw. Um, but then the majority of my caps were under Johnny Giles. Mm. Um, and when I think back now, I didn't think about it at the time, funnily enough, but when I think back now, I was playing for Warsaw in the third division, uh, in the league they're in now. Which is League One for yeah. those who and are young. Yes, <laughs> and everybody I was playing with were playing with teams at the top of the Premier League. Really? I mean, players like Liam Brady, Johnny Giles, um, Frank Stapleton, Dave O'Leary, Mark Lawrence, and... So Steve Harvey. I mean, you know, uh, and yeah. there was me playing yeah. for Warsaw, like, and it was great. Oh, I loved yeah, it. I, I did, really yeah. did uh, love it, and yeah. I look forward to every opportunity yeah. I had. Who was the other goalkeeper in your squad at the time? Then? Um, at that time, it was m most of the time it was, uh, it was Paddy Roach from Manchester mm. United. Mm. Um, there was um, Jerry Payton. Mm. Who played for Burnley? Fulham. Fulham. Well. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
they were mo they were mostly that they, they were yes. mostly the, yeah. the goalkeepers. But but, but clearly John and others had faith in you as as their goalkeeper. Well, the thing is, like anything in, in football and anything in sport, if you, if you're doing well, it's very uh, difficult to uh, dislodge that person yes. that's in uh, goal. And I have to say, I, I was I was quite consistent uh, when I when, uh, when I played yep. for. All right, I had great players playing in front uh, of me. Uh, mm. Protecting me a lot of the time, and I wouldn't have had too much to do, I'm sure. Mm. But um, you know, it's like all sports. If if you're doing okay, you know, mm. why change a winning team? So, did you ever find yourself sort of wandering around the six-yard area as goalkeepers do, and looking in front and, and seeing the best of Chippy Brady and, and and Frank Stapleton and and all the rest of them, and, and thinking, mm, I quite like this. This yeah. me. I did. Uh, I have to be honest, but mm. you couldn't get too carried away. You had a job of work to mm. do. If your heads got got up in the clouds or something like that, mm. you know that was when it was going to hurt you. Something would happen that mm. would hurt you. Uh, yes, but I had. I have to say, probably wasn't happening too much when I was playing, but when you get back in the dressing room afterwards and you look round and you've just beaten somebody and you look mm. round the dressing room and you think to me, I used to think to myself how lucky I was mm. to be in that situation. You wonder if any young goalkeeper would think that today? Well, hopefully a young goalkeeper will get that opportunity. And uh, the first thing he'll think about is how lucky he was to be in that situation and then to enjoy it, because mm. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But the point is that you were enjoying it at the time, whereas you think, you know, you, you talk to a lot of them now and they say, oh, you know, I wish I'd, I'd, I'd done this and done that when I was playing and I didn't realise. You clearly realised at that time, you know, yes. in, in your 20s. Well, the thing is, I was lucky. I was, listen, I was playing for Oxford and Warsaw, with all due respect yeah. to those teams. And I'm going out with mm. people who uh, you know, are challenging to win what is mm. now the Premier League. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, it was a, you know, a, a different world, really. But they, I never treated them any differently on the field, and they never treated me any differently on the field. We were 11 players out on that mm. pitch trying to beat the opposition to qualify for whatever <coughs> competition it was we were in. Were you ever tempted at that stage to write a letter to the school teacher who said, Michael, you will not make it as a professional footballer, find yourself a proper job? No, I won't really, because... Listen, I, I knew I it, knew where you? he was. <laughs> I knew where he was coming from in yeah. that because it, it is, you know, I and highly the unlikely, have said the same absolutely, thing. and and been mm. properly advised. Mm. Uh, and but I'll always I will always say, and I think m a lot of professional footballers will say, how lucky we have been mm. to have been in a career of choice, um, and uh, you know, suffered very few injuries, mm. and uh, come through it. You've got to have a certain amount of luck to, to, to get there in the first place, I would say. I mean, given that you're, you said earlier that your parents had come to this country in the, in the 40s, England that is, uh, from the west coast of Ireland, uh, I don't know how often you went back there, but did you feel you were part of the Irish team? Did you feel Irish when you were playing for them? Yes. Yes, v very much so. Um, my parents were very proud. Uh, I mean, I'll give you, a, for instance, if, <coughs> if you'll allow mm -hmm. me to do that. My, my, my father was, was very, very proud of me. But he would have seen me play on very few occasions throughout my career. Very few occasions. You probably could have c counted them on two hands. Mm. Um, but uh, he, he got word that I was playing. And in those days, there was no mobile phones or no communication, email or mm. anything like that. And he got word that I was playing. And anyway, uh, I phoned him up the following day to say, oh, uh, Dad, um, I don't know whether you knew. Because in those days, there was no sky. There was no, mm. you picked it uh, on the newspaper, really. <coughs> um, oh, I played. He said, uh, I know. I said, what do you mean? How do you mean? He'd come over. He got on the boat, came across to Dublin to watch the match, and was back home by the time I'd phoned him. And he'd come over and watch the match. I didn't even know he was there. But that was typical of my father. He was very, very low mm. key. Mm. You know, he um, he was very proud, and I knew he was proud because I used to meet people in the town who'd say, "Oh, mm. your dad told me this, and your dad told me that." I hadn't even told him. You know, so he he mm. was very low key. That's, I mean, that's a lovely story, that isn't it? Because I mean, now families, a lot of families, would be queuing up asking for tickets. That's and right, absolutely. And, and they would see he. Yeah. 
And he probably sat in the stand and didn't say anything. No, to he wouldn't have said a word. He went out. Uh, he'd have gone up on the train to Hollyhead, across to Dunleary, <coughs> in watched the game, bought his ticket, on the train back, and and that would have been it. Mm. Nobody would have. Nobody would have known. But you've got to know my father to mm. realise that that yeah. that's the yeah. way he yeah. is. Yeah. And what was Ollie's view? I mean, he, as you say, did play for Reading. He he got a lot of goals in his time, but. <coughs> Was he sort of just proud of you that you'd, you'd done? Yeah, I think so. He, he, uh, he enjoyed that fact, but he didn't quite get the opportunity, mm. pr props because of the quality of strikers that were around mm. um, at his time. Because it's, it's a strange life, isn't it, as a goalkeeper? You, you are waiting for the other guy to get injured, yep. get sent off or something like this. And yet there's this great camaraderie, isn't there? You know, the goalkeepers union you hear about. Yeah. Even a guy who's you know won the bench for so many matches now, they're still the biggest of mates, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And of course, uh, I went into coaching after finishing, mm. and then uh, took goalkeepers at War Warsaw and uh, Wolves when I was there. And yes, that camaraderie is still there, and they th th there is genuine warmth in when they appreciate mm. uh, them playing well. Uh, it's peculiar, really. I think in most walks of life, the <laughs> You mm. know, they can't wait to take yeah. your place or something, but mm. no, there is genuine camaraderie uh, with goalkeepers. Because nowadays, with almost everybody having a goalkeeper on the bench, if the other one gets sent off, yeah. uh, he comes off, it's put the gloves on, a bit of this, and then the next thing he's probably fishing the ball out the net from yeah. the penalty, isn't he? That's exactly it. And of course, in my day, you never had anything like that. No. I mean, you could. Mm. You could. Uh, now, uh, in those days, uh, what some of the things that went up, you'd be regarded as assault mm -hmm. in, in football yeah. today. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, no, um, no uh, that's another yeah. reason why the game has moved on. Mm -hmm. No red cards ever? No. Booked no. occasionally. Yes. Um, Was that for exchanging pleasantries with the referee? or? No, uh, I can remember one booking. I had a... Um, in fact, two two of the bookings, uh, I had three bookings that I can remember. Two of them were from concussion, mm. um, and I had concussion, and I can remember at Swindon in particular, I put the ball down, and goalkeepers. Nowadays, you have to come off, mm. don't you? But in those days, well, you know how daft we are as goalkeepers. Mm. People are Absolutely. quite right when they say things like that. But I put the ball down, and I, I could see it moving, and it was like. I was trying to focus, mm. and we were winning the match. And of course, it was late in the second half. Referee came up and uh, booked me. Um, about ten minutes later, we we're in the dressing room. I collapsed and got taken to the to the hospital. Um, Survived to tell the tale. And then the other time was I was playing an international. Dave O'Leary had gone off, uh, been carried off injured. time under your belt you're doing well at Oxford and uh, the chance of a move came yeah came to, to Warsaw and uh, I have to say I would regard that as the best move I've ever made um, I came to Warsaw I think I was fortunate that um, in moving to to Warsaw I, I settled in Aldridge uh, which is a, a lovely village we call it a village although it's right connected to Warsaw mm. and uh, very much still a village atmosphere, and, and, I, and I put it down to the fact that I was fortunate enough to have chosen Aldridge to buy a house in Aldridge and got some terrific friends there. Mm. And you know, a lot, lots of footballers when they when they finish playing end up going back to you know where they've been brought up, you know where families are and stuff like that. But I I didn't. I decided to to stay in Aldridge and because of mm. how well settled I was. So who was the manager of Walsall when you signed for them? Ronnie Allen. Right. Uh, 1973, June, July 1973. Mm. Ken Weldon had taken over, I think, the season before as chairman, and Ronnie Allen was appointed uh, during that s either the end of that season or, or during that summer, and uh, um, Ronnie Allen signed me from, from Oxford. How long was it before you took over, as it were? <laughs> In as a regular goalkeeper at, at Warsaw, I, I came in as uh, the number mm. one goalkeeper. Right uh, at that time, yeah. And and what were those early days like? Fantastic, really. Mm. I, I knew within a very short period of time that I'd made the right move. 
Um, I was welcomed into the club by the players that were, were already there. And, um, you know, we, we started getting the makings of a good team. We didn't really have that good a season. Uh, in actual fact, um, Ronnie Allen did get the sack, um, I think, uh, bef certainly before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And uh, Doug Fraser took over as player manager, who we'd signed from Nottingham Forest. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we, we never hit any high spots in the league in all the time I was at Warsaw. Uh, however, the tradition that the club had had in FA Cups and things mm -hmm. like that uh, continued in that period that I was there. And indeed, you um, you played against Arsenal, didn't you? Uh, yes. Um, I don't, I, I'd, I'd, re I'd retired. Uh, you're talking about the second time yes. when we yeah. beat Arsenal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd actually retired and come out of retirement mm. uh, w when we uh, beat them at Highbury. Uh, now, quite often, um, if a team from the lower divisions beats a top team, uh, there could be a number of reasons for it. You know, the, the top team, like Arsenal in this case, would play well below their form. We'd have played out of our skin. They'd have hit the post four or five times, uh, had three or four goals offside, and we'd have pinched a goal. Well, that game is, was never like that. We were the better side from the first whistle to the last whistle. And we played them off the park, and um, it wasn't a fluke at all. We we were by far the better mm -hmm. side. In fact, I was I went there as the visiting goalkeeper, we're coming out of retirement because at the time I was the steward of Aldridge Conservative Club, mm -hmm. and um, thankfully my back four protected me well, and uh, we ended up winning the game. Mm -hmm. Who was in that team then? I mean, it was Pat the Arsenal team. Yeah, I mean that uh, was some performance. Well, Pat it? Jennings. David O'Leary, Stuart Robson. Um, you caught me out with that question, it's but not, it's not but, a uh, but but it was a strong yeah, side. Yeah, it yes, wasn't one yeah, of these weakened yeah. no, sides. No, no, no. And um, uh, we we did literally play them off the park. People mm -hmm. like David Priest was fantastic that night, mm -hmm. and Ali Brown scored the winning mm -hmm. goal, and uh, it was a tremendous achievement. As you say, you. As a club, never hugely hit the high spots in the league, Walsall. But they've had some good players over the years, haven't they? Very, very, very good players. Alan Clark mm. is a notable one. He went on uh, to play for England, of course. Mm. Uh, uh, Alan Buckley was a, was a terrific player. Um, yeah, they've been really good players at, uh, at Walsall. David Priest, uh, mm. who I mentioned a little bit earlier, mm. good players. But when you look at somebody like Alan Clark, when you saw him as a young player, did you immediately see something different about him? Uh, well, he'd, he'd moved on from Warsaw oh, when, 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 I, came, yes. uh, when yeah. I joined. Um, the thing about Alan Clark was, if there was a chance, he took it. You know, he, mm. he, he, wouldn't, he looked a bit ungainly. Um, uh, he was good, his touch was good. But the, the thing about him, if he had a chance, he took it. Mm. Uh, and that's what made him a terrific player. Mm. So, you say cup matches were what made the club to some extent. What was your best ever game, do you think, for, for Walsall? There's one game that, that stands out as a highlight uh, to me in terms of performance. Um, I, I can't remember what year it was. It was certainly early 70s, and we got drawn against Chesterfield in the FA Cup. I can't remember whether it was the first game was at home or it was away. Uh, and the reason why I say that, it went to uh, what doesn't happen now, mm. to um, a second replay would always be played on a neutral ground. Right. So we drew a game at Warsaw, for instance, and then we drew away at Chesterfield. Then uh, we played on a neutral ground, which in those days we played at the baseball ground, um, Derby's, uh, uh, Derby's pitch. Mm. Now, what was hugely significant about this tie was uh, both uh, Chesterfield and us, we knew we were playing Man United at Old Trafford in the next round. So it was vital. for Some incentive, uh, isn't it? Huge incentive for the players, big for the supporters, um, and fantastic for the di directors because we were going to generate mm. some money. So I can remember, you, you asked me, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent now. Okay. But, uh, Bob, but, um, it was one of those games where I couldn't do anything wrong. And we hardly we had one attack 
from what I can remember in that match. Uh, we had one attack. Maya Dennehy went down the right-hand side, crossed the ball in, header from Bernie Wright, stunned silence all round the ground. This was halfway through the first half, a uh, second half, and it just been a constant barrage our way. The ball was hitting me. I was saving it. I swear, if I'd have turned round and they'd have shot a goal, it'd have hit me on the back or something. It was just one of those days, and we ended up winning the game. Uh, and the euphoria of knowing we were going then to, to Old Trafford. Mm -hmm. And I can remember um, walking, at the, uh, the baseball ground, when you came out to go back to the coach, there was a very narrow alleyway when you came out mm -hmm. of the dressing room. And there were no press rooms or anything like that. And Arthur Cox was the manager of Chesterfield at the time. And uh, I'm, I'm w I walked past him, just as he's given his... Um, you know, they're uh, answering the questions mm. of the press, and uh, I can remember him saying, "We'd be going to Old Trafford now, but for that expletive walking down there." Then, so uh, I took that as a terrific compliment. Mm. How was Old Trafford? Fantastic, absolutely. Now, once again, <laughs> we played there. I think two years running, or two out of three years. Mm. And we drew at Old Trafford. I think I think it must have been the first time. Mm. We drew at Old Trafford nil nil, uh, and Man United were flying, and uh, we brought them back to Warsaw and beat them three two, mm. um, and uh, which was fantastic. Um, a couple of years later, or the following year, we went there again and lost one nil, but we gave a really good account of ourselves. So there were th those were two terrific um, FA Cup ties, yeah. and uh, you know a lot of the fans of mm -hmm. my age group, and perhaps a little bit higher, but w would remember those days very fondly. So you're standing on the goal line, and you're looking out, and there's Manchester United. Yeah, loved it, mm -hmm. loved it. You know, um, players at the lower lower level, if they're that way inclined, can't wait to get out on that pitch to play against them. You know, just to see how you do. Mm. Well, I was fortunate I've played in internationals and, mm. um, you know, to, to for, for me to a certain extent, I, 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 I could handle it probably a little mm. bit more. Mm. But some of the younger players, you know, it was great for them. And mm. some do well in it and some don't do so well. Mm. Uh, some can handle it and some can freeze a little bit. Uh, but on that day, the team that went out really, uh, really did well. I've talked to one or two people who remember you well in your football playing days. Are, you very old? Are they old people? Well, they've <laughs> probably been around a little yes. while, dare I say. Uh, and one of them said to me, his phrase was, Oh yeah, Kernsey, the master of time-wasting. Uh, Sounds a little harsh, or is it? Yes, I. I You're buying I, time I, there. You see. I knew <laughs> how to talk, how, I knew how to waste time, without it may, being too obvious. I think mm. one or two, when I see goalkeepers today booked for mm. time wasting, I think to myself, you, you, you're not clever enough. You've got to be clever to to mm. do it. And there was an. Uh, yes, I agree. I, I'll have to say there is a little bit of an art in it. Mm. But I, I thought I could waste up to five minutes a game. Really? If, uh, if needs be. Well, as you don't play anymore, you can tell us how you did this. Well, little things like if, I'd, if somebody threw the ball back from the crowd, I'd always make sure that I was trying to get my body in between me and the um, referee. And as it's thrown back, I'd throw it back into the crowd. Or just go to pick it up and accidentally kick it forward because mm. I got my foot, the stride of my foot going for it, just go away from it or, and then mm. run, but run very, very slowly, which can be less than walking pace. Things like that, you can mm. look as if you're hurrying up, but did some I'm giving a bit of an art at way now. Yeah, this is, this, is Im this is good to learn. Uh, did some referees come up and say, I know what you're doing? No. <laughs> No, because as they would be running up towards me, I'd kick it. <laughs> First bounce and over yes, the goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, it, I mean, you know, to have spent so long at a, at a club as you have done uh, as a player at Walsall, I mean, I know you, 
you did have little bits of end of seasons, didn't you, at, uh, at other end of your career at other places. But you, you became, you said that when you arrived, how much you liked the feel of it. Yeah. And you clearly, it, I mean, it's still got that family feel, the community feel about it, hasn't it? Very much so, because after I, I f finished, I, I, um, I took a job outside football, um, but still retained mm. my, I was still employed by Warsaw Football Club because I took the goalkeepers, mm. coached the goalkeepers, but mm. then a job that was too good really to turn down, which was the steward of uh, Aldridge Conservative Club. And once again, I was so lucky there because I thoroughly enjoyed that job. Now, unfortunately, my wife at that time became very ill and tragically died um, of cancer in 1990. And uh, I could no longer fulfill that role uh, at uh, the Conservative Club. And at that time, the community uh, uh, job was, uh, was coming available at Warsaw. Mm. And uh, Barry Blower called me in the office one day and said that he wanted me, me to consider becoming Warsaw's first community mm -hmm. officer. And uh, it was too good a job to, to turn down because Barry had sold it in such a positive way to me. And I went on to complete 24 years as the He sold community. it well. He certainly did. And what was brilliant about it, um, between him and Roy Wally, mm. uh, I had a blank canvas. Mm. And uh, I, I used to get advice, particularly from Roy, and, and I built it up uh, to mm. be one of the best mm. I, I community programs in the country, and that's something I'm really proud of. And if, if I'm proud of uh, anything at Warsaw Football Club, it would be the pride in establishing a very successful community programme. The great thing was, you see, when you picked the phone up or you went to see somebody, you didn't have to introduce yourself, did you? They instantly knew. And they that would have, was they would have had a story for you. That was a considerable advantage, I do have to mm. say, um, that I would go to schools, I would go to associations in the town, um, uh, and once I said who I was from Warsaw Football, oh yes, so it opened doors mm. for me mm. and made life easier in establishing that, mm. uh, that program. Uh, however, it, it did take a lot of work mm. and a lot of hard work um, and now uh, the, the club uh, are really benefiting from it. And, and up until quite recently you combined that with being the goalkeeping coach as well? Yes. Um, I did that uh, as well as running the community. It was, it w I found it very difficult at times uh, to combine the two. However, uh, you know, I worked hard at it and I, and I think w one or two goalkeepers w would say that I helped them in some way, p particularly Jimmy Walker, I would mm. like to think. Do you not miss being out on the field and training field? And um, Yes, I'd have to say that I do uh, I miss that, and I, I miss um, the the dressing room banter. Mm. Now, if you talk to all professional footballers when they retire, mm. they, I'm, I'm sure that's the one thing that they miss: mm. uh, uh, the dressing room banter, um, and that's what I miss probably more than anything now. However, in my role now um, as football ambassador to Warsaw Football Club and Match Day host, I try to get out to the training ground mm. at least w once a fortnight and I get memorabilia signed like footballs for charities and things like mm. that. So at least I'm going in there mm. and having a bit of wit mm. and repartee with the players. Of course over this year you went to Wembley didn't you? I did, yes. Fantastic. Is that the first time you've been to a football match and not worked? <laughs> what a good point. <laughs> I think it must um, be. Certainly involving Warsaw. You either played or you coached. Yeah. Or certainly involving Warsaw. Now you Warsaw. do radio commentary, yeah. don't you, as well? Certainly involving Warsaw, it, it yeah. would have been. Uh, it's the first time I've ever seen Warsaw play and not been, not been working. Because even when we went to the Millennium Stadium yeah. um, um, and got promotion, yeah. um, I was working for WM. Yeah. So what was it like sitting there? Um, in the Royal Box, were you? Or? I think I was. Yeah, I was. You yeah, think? Bit you of dig, yeah. Bit, yeah, so mm. 
Um, yes, the club very kindly um, came to me and said, uh, you know, you don't really want to work that day. And I said, no, I'd love to take in the whole occasion if I could. Uh, and Dan Mole, bless him, uh, mm. said, uh, you know, he'd give me the day off. And what was it like from the other side then? Um, it was a fantastic experience, mm. you know, to be down at Wembley watching Warsaw there for the first time and, you know, the fans were fantastic, mm. absolutely brilliant. Uh, the only unfortunate thing is we didn't really do ourselves justice. No. No. Um, you know, one or two of the players didn't play up to their, what they were capable of. Had they done so, it would have been a much closer mm. game. Bristol City were a very good side, mm. but it would have been a lot closer. And really, I felt sorry for the fans, really, more than anything, mm. that, mm. you know, they'd come in their thousands and we didn't really put on a display. Yeah. If we'd have put on a display and got beat... Mm. That's sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, the thing is, as you say, it's been so much a community club, it's been a community you've been a part of. So it must be quite strange to have, to have actually stepped away from it. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is. Uh, but I put, a, I put a lot of hard work into it. Mm. And uh, with the community, certainly, I had a, a deputy there, Adam Davey, who w had been with me for a long mm. time and deserved to take over. But the key to it was... Je if Jeff Bonds hadn't uh, come to me on the retirement of Roy Wally, mm. as um, he's retained his position as, as on the board, mm. but uh, retiring his secretarial duties, and then uh, as a result of that, asking me to become the match day mm. host and ambassador, an ambassador for the club, uh, I'd still probably be doing it. It's not been a bad life, has it, for a boy from Bamber? Listen, I'm very 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 lucky about how my career in yeah. Warsaw Football Club uh, my career is a prof in professional mm. football mm. but the big plus is that I joined Warsaw you made the right decision Mick Kearns it's been a pleasure thank you so much for being my guest on the uh, Midland Sports Club but this week really do appreciate it's it. my pleasure Bob and let me just tell you that uh, next week my guest will be a gentleman who played just one game for England. Many people couldn't understand how he could only be picked once, but there were one or two to choose from at the time. As it was, he had an outstanding career uh, at the very highest level, and he is the uh, former Wolverhampton Wanderers centre forward. I can call him that because that's what he was, John Richards. Uh, that's all to come in next week's programme, but for us from tonight, from Nick and myself, thanks for watching and bye-bye. <laughs>